Today, we are going to have a close look at the orange docker. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today, let's have a look at the action buttons located in the orange docker. This docker was designed to help you organize your vector shapes. To install the docker on your workspace, go to settings, choose dockers and choose arrange right here. The docker will appear in different places depending on whether you've used it before or not. Also as a quick reminder, don't forget that sometimes when installing new dockers into the workspace, they may appear behind another docker as tabs. So as you can see, mine appeared at the bottom right of the interface because a while back I placed it here. So for today's demonstration, let me relocate it somewhere else. For those of you who are new to Krita, to move a docker, click on the float docker button to eject the docker from its location. Then using your left mouse button, drag it to a new spot. When a location is ready to welcome a new docker on the interface, it highlights, as you can see. This means that you can drop your docker. You can lock the docker in place if you want. Finally, don't forget to use the little white dots to resize the docker. Before I start this tutorial, I'd like to mention something very quickly. As you can see, I have a vector layer filled with vector shapes, however, the docker looks empty. In order for you to see and use the action buttons in this docker, you must have the Select Shapes tool activated. I'm going to click on it, and voila, the buttons appear. We'll start looking at what the very first row of buttons will allow us to do. As the title suggests, these buttons are going to help us align our vector shapes. First, select the shape that you want to organize. Then, try the buttons one by one. Use this button to align your shape left horizontally center, align right, align top, vertically center, and align bottom. Thanks to the arranged docker, you can now easily and perfectly center a shape on the canvas. Just use the horizontal and the vertical center buttons, and voila! This set of buttons is very useful when you need to distribute shapes evenly. I'll look at one button in detail for you to better understand how the measurements of distance are done. Then I'll just demonstrate the other buttons. I am going to look at this button, distribute left edges equidistantly. First let me select all the shapes and let me click on the button. So what this means is that this left edge and this left edge are at one distance and this left edge and this left edge is at exactly the same distance, the same for those two. Now we are not working vertically, we are just working with shapes that are in the horizontal plane, so the distance should be the same for all of these shapes. I am going to use the measure tool. It's called the measure the distance between two points tool. And here I am going to change the units of measure to inches. 
So with your left mouse button, you click on your first point and then you go toward the second point. And the best is to have a zero degree angle to have a perfect horizontal uh, measurement. But because it takes so long to get to it, I'll just not worry about uh, my angle. I'll just worry about the distance. So, so far we have a 1.3 inches distance between the two left edges. Now let's me measure these two one, 1.3, and these two ones, 1.3. So I hope that this will help you understand how the measurements are done. Now let's look at these four shapes. Let's say that I wanted to have them really at the same distance, but I wasn't very good and uh, I tried to do it by eye. And as you can see, it looks like this distance here is smaller than the distance between these two squares and these two squares. So the first thing you would do is obviously select all the shapes at once and then you would click on this one. Distribute centers equidistantly horizontally. And now the distance between the centers of each square will be the same, meaning also that the distance between them is also the same. Now because I can't see the centers of my shape, I can at least measure between the squares. So if I use my little measuring tool, I will see that I have 0.4 inches here, 0.4 inches here, and 0.4 inches there. Now play with the other buttons and you can do the same. You can distribute your shapes from the top edge equidistantly, from the center and from the bottom edges. If you need to have equal distances between your shapes, use the spacing buttons. First, drag your cursor on the canvas to select all the shapes at once. This button will level out any gaps you may have horizontally. While this button will level out any gaps you may have vertically. You can change the order in which your vector shapes appear on the canvas. To bring the purple square on the very top of all the shapes, select the shape first. Then click on the button Bring to Front. And now you have the shape on the very top. Now if you want to bring the yellow circle at the very bottom, click on the shape first and click on this button, send to back. And now the yellow circle is at the very bottom. Right now the heart is located between the triangle and the square. But what about if I wanted it to be between the triangle and the circle? To bring the heart between those two shapes, you are going to click on this one lower. So the heart is selected and now I'm clicking on the lower. And now it is between the circle and the triangle. Now if I want to bring it back between the triangle and the square, I just have to click on this button, raise. Finally, let's talk about those last two buttons, the group and the ungroup button. So to group, it's very simple. You need to select the shapes first. So click on the first shape, then holding the shift key, select another shape. Now just click on the group button. 
Now if you want to add more shapes, just hold down the shift key and select the other shapes and click group again. To ungroup, select your group and click on the button ungroup. So these are still grouped, but these have been separated. This happens usually when you group things in sequence, like I did in my demonstration. So no worries, the only thing that you have to do is click back on the shapes that are still grouped together and click once more on ungroup. And now this time they are ungrouped. And we are done for today. I'll see you next week with a quick tip. Until then, have a wonderful week. Au revoir et à bientôt.